Good morning, this is Father Extet, and this is Calc 4, and we're having a little online class today in lieu of our uh, cancellation this morning due to the weather. Um, this is section 15.3, double integrals over general regions, and uh, take a look at this problem number two, which is a lot like number four, which you've been assigned, and uh, number two would say, well, we're not going to integrate over a rectangle or a square. We're going to um, integrate over a triangle. And consider that interior of that integral. That is, let's uh, take and peel this piece out, right? And notice with respect to y, the y's are bounded by the red line on the upper end and the black line on the lower end. That is between 2 on the upper end and 2x on the lower end. And so let's just go ahead and integrate. And uh, x, of course, would become xy with respect to y. And integrating uh, negative y would become negative y squared over 2. And our uh, upper limit is y equals 2 and our lower limit is y equals 2x. So if we put 2 in for y, don't we get 2x minus 4 over 2 or 2? If we put our lower limit in, we have 2x squared minus, if we put 2x in for our y, we get 4x squared over 2. Well, won't this all break down to just a 2x minus 2? Because 2x squared minus this quantity reduces to 2x squared, so we have a, a minus 0, right? So this term uh, goes away. So now we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And we're going to do it with respect to x. And if we do that, we'll get 2x squared over 2 minus 2x. Upper limit 1, lower limit 0. We love uh, limits when they're 0. We put in 1, and we get 1 minus 2, or negative 1. And perhaps you might think at first, oh, something's wrong. I got a negative answer. But think about... Um, this plane, and it is a plane, z equals x minus y. Um, on this corner at 0, 0, when x is 0 and y is 0, um, z has got no height. And on this corner, when x is 1 and uh, y is 2, um, you know, you get 1 minus 2 is a negative 1, and uh, we're on the other side of the plane, the negative side of the plane, not coming out from it, but behind it. And if we go to this other corner here, where we have, what, x equals 0 and y equals 2, we're back the other side even further. So we have this uh, prism that when we look at the uh, xy plane, we don't see it because the entire volume is behind the xy plane. So it's got a negative, um, it's got a, a negative volume. But I wanted to take a moment and consider this problem done in the opposite order with respect to x first. If we were paying um, attention to what x is, wouldn't we be thinking about uh, bounded by um, the triangle now with the x's, the horizontal distances, being bounded between the line x equals 0, oops, excuse me, line x equals 0, and uh, this line written in the form x is some function of y, x equals y over 2. 
So it certainly can be done in the other order. And so if I peel out that inside now of it from 0 to y over 2, and I consider x minus y dx, and I'll get what? x squared over 2 minus um, yx. And I'll put in 4x now, y over 2 for the upper end, and uh, x equals 0 for the lower end. Um, we'll get uh, y squared over 4 divided by 2, or y squared over 8, um, minus y squared over 2. And if I put in 0 for x, won't I get a minus 0? And then I can continue with my other limits. Notice my other variable y um, is uh, bounded by 0 and 2. They go from just 0 to 2. And so if I work this, I get uh, y cubed over 24, would it be? Uh, minus uh, y cubed over 6, with an upper limit of 2 and a lower limit of 0. I'll get uh, 8 over 24. minus 8 over 6. Uh, when I put the lower limit, of course, I'll get a, a minus 0, right? And then I need a common denominator, namely 24. So I have 8 minus 6 goes into 24 4 times, and 4 times 8 is 32. And 8 minus 32 is a negative 24 over 24. So you get the same answer out. So we could set it up either way and get the same answer. Maybe a little more difficult this way. So this time with number 6, Rather than drawing it out with uh, not the xy plane, but the uh, vw plane, if you will, and uh, focusing on the regions, let's just jump in and uh, perform the integration. And notice with number 6 that uh, the order we're presented with is pretty nice because uh, if we take and focus on that interior, integral, won't we get the square root of 1 plus e to the v um, w from e to the v as my upper limit, and of course that's my w, right? And uh, 0 on the lower end of things. So putting in my upper limit will leave me now with uh, 1 plus e to the v times another e to the v. And I could put my 0 in, but 0 times anything is 0, so minus 0. Uh, we're good to go here, and we can continue on with uh, 0 to 1 now with respect to v. We'll use a little substitution here. We'll let u equal 1 plus e to the v. And we'll let du equal e to the v dv. So replacing e to the v dv with du. And replacing what's under the integral sign with a u. Now we need to integrate 
but be careful we need new limits and we have our translator here so if we put 0 in and get e to the 0 for our v e to the 0 would be 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2 for our lower limit and our upper limit would be 1 plus e to the first or 1 plus e So integrating radical u, won't that be, well, that's u to the 1 half. So it would be u to the 3 halves over 3 halves, or 2 thirds, u to the 3 halves. And our upper limit will be 1 plus e. And our lower limit will be 2. So uh, when we substitute in, let's pull the two-thirds up front. Let's put our uh, 1 plus e in, raised to the 3 halves. And then uh, subtract our lower limit, and that will be um, 2 to the 3 halves. And 2 to the 3 halves, um, various ways of saying that, right? That's the square root of 2 cubed to the square root of 8, which I guess you could say is 2 square roots of 2. And you could manipulate the answer, but uh, that's essentially it. Number 9 presents a little bit of a different challenge in that we're given the boundaries of x and y, and it would seem that we could set it up in either fashion. That is to say, it would seem that maybe we'd want to integrate this with respect to x first. So let's just take a look at this and say, well, let's just go from 0 to pi with respect to x, and then have x dx. So we have that as our interior integral. And then as our exterior, let's go from uh, 0 to sine of x uh, dy. And what we're going to find is, um, that what we want the trick here is going to be to always examine these uh, limits of integration and whichever one involves um, a variable like 0 to the sine of x that's what we want to do first we want to do this with respect to y first so we want to do this from 0 to uh, sine over x, um, x is our integrand. We're doing this first of all with respect to y, and then we'll come back and do 0 to pi um, dx. And you can try it both ways and see what the issue is in terms of calculation, and then we'll talk um, in a more general sense what the issue really is behind it when you find that uh, it can't be done in that first order that might suggest itself. So let's be about this and we'd have what uh, x squared over 2 with an upper limit of sine of x and a lower limit of 0. Oh, I take that back. That's not right. Let's uh, get rid of that our upper and lower limits are correct, but uh, what's not right is when we do it with respect to y, we're going to have x, um, y, right? When we do it with respect to y first, x is going to be a constant, we're going to have x, y. Um, when we put our upper limit in, we'll get x sine x. When we put our lower limit in of 0, we'll get 0 because these are what we're putting in for y. So now we need to come back at this and go from 0 to pi. And uh, this is an integration by parts problem. 
Maybe you recognize it. I hope you do. It's one of the first ones that you should have done back in the integration by parts days. Let u equal x. Let uh, dv be the sine of x. Let uh, du equal dx. Let uh, v equal negative cosine x, right? The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So with those parts assigned and using the integration by parts formula, which says, you know, the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. That's uh, number one on the chart in the back of the book, right? Um, we'll say this integral um, is going to equal u times v, so that's a negative x cosine x, minus the integral of v du. Well, minus, and then we have a, a minus cosine x dx. We can take that negative outside, out front, and write negative x cosine x plus the integral of cosine x. And the integral of cosine x, or antiderivative of cosine x, is just sine x. And now, don't forget, we have limits here, so let's bring those in. The upper limit is... Uh, pi, right, and the lower limit is 0. So putting pi in, we get negative pi times the cosine of pi plus the sine of pi. Putting the lower limit in, we get uh, 0 times anything is 0 plus the sine of 0. And cosine of pi is a negative 1. Um, sine of pi, or sine of any pi, is 0. Minus um, sine of 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0. So it seems to me that we get pi as our final answer here. I need to make mention of why is it that it works sometimes in the one direction but not in the other. And although I didn't ask you to do these problems, that it's good that we uh, take a look at them. Um, they're talking about regions that are of type 1 and type 2. And uh, to uh, say a little more about what that all means, type 1 and type 2, type 1, type 1. Um, is associated with functions of x and um, the vertical line test. And type 2 are um, functions of y and the horizontal line test. And so if we were going to integrate over this region in A here, um, notice that um, if we draw vertical lines, both the upper and lower boundaries um, are functions of x. There, there are two parabolas. Right? So uh, we would want to integrate, um, we'd call this type 1. And um, our order would be um, dy dx. We would do it with respect to y's first. We'd take that upper and lower boundaries. The upper lower the upper boundary maybe um, I'm not even going to speculate as to what its formula is, right? But it's some downward shaped parabola, and uh, we might have this as uh, you know um, f of x. And the 
this down here is g of x and the way we would set that up is we'd have our our function right and we'd have uh, f of x as our upper boundary and g of x as our lower boundary and we do it first of all with respect to y and then we do it between let's call it a and b here where this is a and this is b with respect to x um, this is what's called type 1 but not type 2 because notice if we tried to draw horizontal lines um, they'd fail the horizontal line test. They wouldn't be functions with respect to y, and we wouldn't be able to do it in the reverse order. Take a look at 11b here, where it's type 2 but not type 1, and how this would be such a region, because now horizontal lines would pass, right? But verticals would fail because verticals would strike the graph in some places multiple times you know yes there is that one place where it touches it once but there's twice it's touching and here's four times right so it's not a function with respect to x these barriers so we have to do it if you will sideways and now that's going to require us to think about you know our region and I mistakenly said some function of x I should have said some function of x and y right. it's hovering either over this or under this and um, this time I'm going to want to do it with respect to x first and then come back and do it with respect to y second um, Take a look at number 12, and uh, here are examples where this one, um, we'll call this A, it wouldn't matter because, remember, type 1, um, we associate that with functions with respect to x and the vertical line test. And notice that the boundaries um, are just crossed once. Vertical line test works. These are both functions of x. Right? And therefore, it would work if we did it with respect to x. Um, but notice this is a curious case where um, the order wouldn't matter not typically the case but it wouldn't matter because aren't these also both functions with respect to y and they both pass the horizontal line test in other words if we draw horizontal lines the upper and lower boundaries the upper may be associated with this one right because it's further to the right now and this one is the lower boundary because it's further to the left you know when you're thinking sideways um, that um, we could do it in either direction. Now, this last one is neither nor, and uh, it's going to, because of that, it's going to create its own little issues, and we're going to have to deal with it um, differently. But notice the case here that, um, yes, um, it looks like it could be a function of x but then we have these uh, regions where it the vertical lines right fail not very good as a vertical line here let's switch it to these right and let's talk about vertical lines right there's there's <laughs> that one's not too vertical either um, all right doesn't pass the vertical line test in some places and uh, equally problematic in some other places right with the horizontal line test it's 
definitely a possible region, but we can't deal with it with our present analysis because it fails um, both as a function of x and a function of y. So just a little aside here to kind of catch us up about what a type 1 is, a function with respect to x past both boundaries past the vertical line test, and a type 2, which is uh, thinking about functions with respect to y and passing the horizontal line test. Just to bring you back for a moment to uh, problem 2, notice that this one is both type 1 and type 2, that um, regions um, you know, with, oops, I don't want to do that, um, passes the vertical line test, our red and our black boundaries for the triangular region that we integrated over, um, both pass the vertical line test, so type 1 is certainly appropriate um, to do it with respect to y first, with the upper and lower boundaries being uh, 2 for y and 2x being the lower boundary. But it's equally as valid to treat it, this one as a type 2. That is to say, um, we can think about... Um, I want to do that. Let's get that back where it belongs. Um, we can think about horizontal lines, and these aren't very good horizontal lines. But uh, they strike the blue and the black boundaries just once. So we can do this with um, thinking about our boundary now as uh, x equals y over 2, and our boundary x equals 0. There I go again, moving the whole thing. So, um, and approaching it, if you will, sideways first of all with our upper and lower boundaries as a type 2 and then uh, finishing it with uh, doing it with respect to y. And uh, we did that in the opening problem so that was a little foreshadowing on my part. Um, one more and then we'll call it a day here at least on the video. To finish the day let's take a look at a problem like number 15 and consider the fact that it could be done in both ways but one way is considerably easier and notice that this the boundaries that's the sideways parabola and the line that um, both of these boundaries cross the horizontal line test so that parabolic boundary, um, yes, it can be written as x equals y squared, or if we take the square root of both sides, we can make it y as a function of x. And so the diagram is labeled up both ways. And then similarly with the line, um, the line could be written y equals x minus 2, or if we swap things around, uh, x equals y plus 2, right? So that's the linear boundary in the green. Now, consider if we treat it as a type 2. If we treat it as a type 2, uh, it means that we're thinking about things horizontally, and the upper boundary is the green line. That's the boundary further to the right. So uh, if we begin to write an integral, it seems that the boundary further to the right for our x's is y plus 2, and our lower boundary is y squared. And then our integrand, of course, is y. We'll do it, first of all, sideways with respect to x. And then our um, boundaries with respect to y um, are on the lower end. 
it seems to me our smallest y is a negative 1, and our largest y is a positive 2. So let's go ahead and um, work this integral. And so what are we going to have here? y squared over 2 with an upper boundary of y plus 2 and a lower boundary of uh, y squared. And of course that's what x is supposed to be. Oops, did I screw this up or did I screw this up? Let's fix it. This is twice today. This is not a good day. Well, it's probably because I'm on this tablet rather than on a whiteboard. So with respect to x, wouldn't this be yx? Because y would just be our constant. And then um, our lower limit is uh, x equals y squared. So for when we put in uh, y plus 2, we get y times the quantity y plus 2 for our we put in our upper limit, and when we put in our lower limit, we get y cubed. So we get this little expression, y squared plus 2y minus y cubed. And now we're going to come back at it and integrate from negative 1 to 2 dy. And we'll get what y cubed over 3 plus uh, 2y squared over 2, go away 2's, minus y cubed over 3, upper limit of 2, lower limit of negative 1. Come back at this and we get, what, 8 thirds plus 4 minus 2 cubed over 3 is going to be minus an 8 thirds, right? Oh, I messed up again. This is y to the 4th over 4. Whoops. So this is going to be 16 over 4. And I think I got it right now. Um, that's with our upper limit. And our lower limit is going to be a negative one-third uh, minus one squared is going to be um, a one. And then um, negative one to the fourth power is one over four. So let's see what we've got here. We've got... Uh, 8 thirds minus a minus 1 third makes for a total of uh, 9 thirds. We have a 4 minus a 1 is going to be a 3. And then we've got negative 16 quarters minus a minus 1 quarter is going to be a minus 15 quarters. So common denominator here would be 12. So we have 36 over 12 plus um, 36 over 12 um, minus 4 goes in 3 times. 3 times 15 is 45. So we have 72 minus 45. And that works out to be what? Well, 70 minus 45 would be 25. So this is 27 over 12. And this reduces. So 27 over 12. 3 goes into both. That would be 9 fourths. And just thinking about it, I did something dumb here earlier on where 9 thirds is 3, right? And 3 plus 3 is 6. So this is the same thing as 6 minus 15 fourths. And it would be a little more direct to say 
about, what would it be, over 4, 24 over 4 minus 15 over 4, uh, 9 fourths. So this is doing it the more efficient way because it is type 2 and we can go about it real direct. But uh, consider this on the next slide. Now we could treat this as a type 1, believe it or not, but it would be a heck of a lot of work and I've done some hatching if you'd call it that, some crude shading over on the diagram on the right. And if we treat this as a type 1, notice that first of all we're going to have to calculate that region that I've done in black. And in order to do that region, I'm going to have to say, well, let's go, you know, we're doing, talking vertically speaking now. So uh, vertically speaking, our Y's um, on the upper end are that red parabola. Um, that would be the square root of X, positive square root of X. Um, and the line, um, the, the x-axis, which is the line y equals 0. And we'd um, do our function y. And we do that, of course, with respect to y, because we're going vertically now. And then we'd come back at that, and we'd say, well, our x's vary from um, 0, our smallest x is 0, and our largest x is 2. And that would take care of the region that I've done over here in black. And we would find um, the volume of the solid over that portion, that black portion of this, um, I don't know what kind of shape you would call that, but uh, it's not a triangle because it's got a curved edge, right? But it'd be over that rather triangular looking piece. And now we've got to add to that um, and now we're going to do it in red here and we're going to consider it vertically again. But notice our boundary switched up. So now our upper boundary continues to be radical x but our lower boundary is um, x minus 2. It's the green line. And then we'll do that y dy dx. All right. And then uh, to continue the story, um, I've got this uh, green boundary down below. And it seems to me I have to add that on. And um, I could do it from on the lower end. And again, I'm thinking about this guy as a function of x now, as a type 1. So the, the lower boundary is the red parabola branch, and the upper boundary is 0. That is the x axis. The line y equals 0. And the lower boundary is a y equals negative radical x. And that would be uh, y, first of all, done with respect to y, done vertically. And then um, my uh, large, smallest x would be 0 and my largest x would be 1. And then uh, finally, to finish this out, um, we would have that blue portion to do here. And I should make those vertical, right? And notice our boundaries switched up. So our upper boundary continues to be the x-axis, which is 0. Um, and our lower boundary is that line x minus 2. for y dy. 
and then um, our smallest value of um, x would be 1 and would continue to where x is 2. Now, again, it can be done with this kind of divide and conquer approach, but who would want to do it that way when we can do it as a type 2, right, in the sh as shown in this previous screen? And it's all done rather directly. And, uh, you know, we get that nice answer, 9 fourths, kind of quickly with 15. So you got something similar to um, work out. Um, and they don't make you, notice it says when you uh, work this problem out, then evaluate the double integral using the easier order. And explain why it's easier. Well, it's easier because you're only going to do two integrations as opposed to eight integrations uh, with this particular one in 15. So you're going to work 16. And let's call it a day. Thanks for your kind attention.